who is going to want him? And oh my God, do I have to be the one? Okay, come on, lovey. And then I thought, yeah, there's room. I have room for Marshall. I can do this. When I adopted Marshall, I did not expect to adopt a special needs dog. In three plus decades as a veterinarian, I have to say um, there are a few things that take my breath away and seeing how badly affected Marshall was really was one of those occasions. When I first laid eyes on Marshall, it was on the Humane Society website and it was a video of him and a volunteer. And so he was, the infection had set in, went down to the bone, so they had to amputate the leg. But as Dr. Schwartz and his team at the Humane Society was operating on Marshall, his heart stopped beating three times. He died. And every single time they'd revive him, perform CPR, he'd come back, you die, he'd come back, he died, he came back, and then he stayed alive. And they're like, they never fought so hard to save a dog before. Not that they haven't wanted to, but because they just had never had a dog fighting along with them. Animal Planet, the cable network, did a show. And that is how Marshall really was discovered. It was called Confessions Animal Hoarding. I was angry at the hoarder. I mean, it took me a while to get to a place of forgiveness because I had evidence every day of the neglect and the abuse this dog endured. And it would break my heart every morning when I'd wake up and it was the face I'd see. At night, he would have these night terrors. These were terrors. He would howl, he would be running, his little nub would be going, and I would be like, I would start crying. I picked up my journal one night, tears on the page. I just start writing a story. His confidence was broken, his spirit was broken, all because of the result of how he was treated. Maybe that is why we found each other. Maybe that is why you fought so hard to survive. It's because you knew I was waiting for you. We started first with, with Marshall the Miracle Dog book. Yeah, I wrote it for an audience of one, not knowing it would go anywhere. And I don't have children of my own, so I shared it with a couple moms and a few teacher friends of mine, and they all agreed. This is really good and it's really important. There are so many connections not just children, but adults can make with this dog. My self-esteem did not come from things. I always thought that that's what was gonna happen. I thought that was gonna be my answer. I've always given back. That is how I heal. Why not have Marshall give back? And so going into schools, I had Marshall trained as a, a therapy dog so he can go with me. He has to go with me. And he's the star, he's the celebrity, I'm just his voice. Some of the messages children have shared are unbelievable because I ask them to turn off their heads and open up their hearts when I read the story because if they do that, they are going to hear a message that is only going to be unique to them from Marshall's story and then a lot of them are brave enough to share it afterwards. So it's pretty powerful. The fact that he's not like frightened right now is I know, I know. Isn't it great? Yep. So nice to meet you. The way I look at it when I go to a school visit and I'm talking in front of 500 kids, if I touch one life, mine and Marshall's job is done. That happens on every visit. And I hear that this boy, Marquise, spent many hours working on his thank you card to Marshall and I. One blessed dog. You changed my life. I love that. If they can remember Marshall the next time they want to act out, or the next time they're a target, maybe they can find their own voice. Or maybe they won't act because they'll remember, this is what it looks like. This is what the result of bullying can look like. When I first uh, had Marshall's book published, I was encouraged not to just think that, this, that Marshall's message was for, for children or young adults. They're like, I think you're gonna be shocked at how many adults find a connection with Marshall. I'm like, but it's a children's book. They're like, just don't, don't, don't be so narrow. And on one of his trips to a nursing home when he was uh, being evaluated as a, as a therapy dog, they had invited all the residents of their nursing home into a one room because everyone wanted to know about Marshall's story. After I shared Marshall's story, a woman who was a resident there just started talking about her dog when she grew up. And afterwards, 
The worker said, she has not spoken in two years. And I was like, oh my gosh, that person who told me that Marshall is a connector with anyone and everyone was absolutely right. I have more toys and chew bones than I can count. I have a soft bed. I have a beautiful home with a mom and a brother, and I even have a best friend. But most importantly, I have unconditional love and acceptance, exactly as I am. I get a phone call from my literary agent one day out in Hollywood, and she said, can you fly out here? I haven't told you this, but my husband is a movie producer. Hollywood came knocking. Here's a dog that grew up in a pen, had no joy, had, didn't even know when his next meal was coming, and now he's going to Hollywood to film his own movie. Ultimately, what I'd love to see happen for Marshall's story is to eradicate bullying, violence towards animals, violence towards each other, and to obviously instill ability awareness that people with disabilities are as able as we are. But what I've realized is that I can be a piece of this. My first thought was, why even try? Because I'm not gonna be able to accomplish this goal. And then somebody said, oh, but don't you realize if everybody had that thought, it, nothing would ever get accomplished. It takes many pieces to be a part of a change in the world. And I thought, I can accept that and I can be a part of this and I can do my small part. Sometimes I feel like maybe only my own life has been touched and that's enough because I'm a different person every day that I wake up. I mean, there's always something going on and some days, you know, I need to be reminded not to give up five minutes before the miracle. Come on.